this might be the, the last assignment. Um, I wanted to just talk about basically where I got the idea. Uh, it comes from painting. Um, <clears throat> this is sort of like the the more amateur way of thinking about layers, where every piece of the, the, the image is broken up into a simple shape, and everything is laid side by side. I always call this the, the puzzle pieces method. And a, real good, a better way of painting is to paint back to front. So whatever's furthest back would be the sky, then the trees, then the house, then maybe the ground. And probably the last thing I'd paint would be the trees themselves. So I call that like painter logic. Um, so something like this, this is an underpainting. Um, the, the ground was laid down with red, but most likely the red will be completely covered up. Um, and you have to start thinking about stacking when you're painting, like back, front, on top of, which is foreign to a lot of people because they're they're in the side by side puzzle piece kind of way of thinking. Um, so how do we do this with drawing? There's lots of ways of considering this with drawing. It's a little harder with drawing because drawing doesn't really have there's not a lot of elements that are opaque like paint, except for maybe like the pastel. So one way is to think of things being seen through. So in this drawing, the leaves are rendered um, with full value. And then on top of that is a simple line drawing. So it's layering the images with by allowing see-through. Here's another way of thinking about that, overlapping. Um, and this is, a, this is a lot how I, when I draw, I, I always draw as if I can see through things. Like if I was drawing this room, I would, the, the window in the middle, I would draw in its entirety regardless if there was something blocking it. Like there's a bunch of figures that are covering it up, but still, in this simple line drawing with white, it's, it's still drawn in its entirety, the window, then all the figures. It's like x-ray vision, sort of. Um, another way of thinking of layers is layering actual different pieces of paper on top of the image. So it's like a color pencil drawing. It looks like color pencil. And then gray pieces of paper are, are glued on top. This drawing, I couldn't find a better higher res version of this, but this is um, a Jerome Woodkin. And I saw this drawing in person, so I know this from, from seeing it, is that it was done in charcoal, but then he would glue strips of paper, so there's like a little rectangle right here you can kind of see. And then there's another one, I think, like right around here. Um, is I, I kind of have the feeling it was probably just a correction that he couldn't make unless he got glued on new pieces of paper. I wonder why, or maybe he raced so hard he tore a hole in the paper, or I don't really know why. Jenny Seville. These are charcoal and pastel. Um, so it looks like like a more rendered realistic drawing and then all this chaos that's done on top and then you can see like the remnants of another leg over here kind of reminds me of um, de Kooning with, like the layers and layers of images you can see like breasts over here so there's another figure just like drawing image on top of image and in different mediums you know the fact that this is done in like or either graphite or charcoal and then this is done in pastel kind of separates them out nicely so another Jenny Seville, like I, I, it seems to me like she deliberately kind of creates like a bed of kind of chaotic marks, and then does um, the drawing, and then she lets she doesn't do the drawing completely filled in. She lets like she, you're able to see through it to see some of the chaos underneath, and then even here there's another lips here, so there's like another face probably buried in there somewhere. It's like she's covering it up, but not, you know, I always say covering up is not the same thing as destroying. She's not destroying the underdrawings. She's just covering them up. Um, again, multiple, almost like double exposure, multiple figures on top of figures on top of figures. And then these like crazy scribbles, which, you know, I don't know. You tell, you tell me what you think this is. Is it, is it just a, you know, arbitrary mark making, or does the, the, the scribbles on top relate to the image underneath? They kind of, they seem to fight each other, but at the same time, I kind of feel 
like if you think of the scribbles as like your eye movement, it seems to kind of correspond sort of to like kind of areas of flow in the composition to me. So it doesn't seem completely arbitrary. And then here she's doing the same thing, kind of multiple image on top of image, and then just other sheets of paper put on top. And is it, is it a correction? Maybe there was something she needed to correct and she put it over, or maybe she's just using this as like a framing device to kind of give you like an area of focus. More Jenny Seville. Um, so in this one, kind of a gruesome image, this piece of paper that she put on top kind of seems to um, be a completely different photo. This is like a photo of one scene, and then this is another, like a photo within a photo. Another Jenny Seville. And it's hard to see, but you can see ghosting of multiple images underneath, like the line drawing under here was slightly different positionings of the feet and even the head over here. This artist layers um, lots of paper, um, does drawings, then he re scrapes it away, erases it away, even puts other pieces of paper. So you can see there's a little piece of paper right here, another piece of paper. It's like almost like these, these two are just like line drawings of the, the face. And this, I can't tell if this is an add-on or if it's torn away. He probably glued on a piece of paper and then t tore it off. Some of it, that's what it looks like in here. Um, same artist. Um, this is just like a quick little, I don't know if this is a finished piece. I think this is like a photo of, of images in his studio. Um, multiple drawings that he cuts up and then tries to compose them into an interesting composition. Another one of his. Um, I think it's easier to see in the close-ups, so let me show you the close-ups. So, um, you know, that is a charcoal drawing. It looks like a photo, but he does... He, I'm assuming he probably completes a drawing and then tears it up and cuts it up and then adds it into the collage. And then even, like, pieces of string are in here. Another artist, very simple drawings that he then cuts out and then sort of collages them together. I wonder if this piece of paper of the hand, if you turn it, if you could turn it over, if the drawing was on that side. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Same artist, simple drawing, and then this like little, probably like a scrap that he had laying around in the studio. That even looks like tape right there, if you ask me. Same artist, scraps of paper, taped together, even some kind of note of something, even you put, just put on with tape. Same artist, this one's a weird one, very uh, kind of minimal, just like fragments of a hand. I wonder if these are even fingers over here. You know, it's easy to draw like this, or to draw and then collage, because then you can kind of, you can think... Um, about you know arranging things in multiple different arrangements before you settle on it and glue it down. This is I guess the other simple way of thinking about layers is um, this artist just takes a piece of notebook paper. It looks like they just taped it down. They might have glued it, but that looks like clear tape to me. And it does a drawing on top. You know what does it do? I mean, you should ask yourself. You know, is it what what does it do? It seems to. I mean, it, it, it seems to just give another area of focus. It's like this is like, like a framing device. All frames are always like another area of focus in my mind. And then the lighter tone to this kind of also helps bring this area into focus. Same artist. Um, th though this is painting the, the colored flesh part and collaging in like um, either wrapping paper or old um, wallpaper. And same artist, let me show you, like, side by side, does a complete drawing in charcoal, and then use, just kind of plays around. That looks like oil paint to me. It could be acrylic. And then tears off the edge and then collages it with that same piece of, like, wallpaper. 
So I mean that this is one way I think of working. It's like you could you could sometimes sometimes you don't have you don't know exactly what you're going to do, but maybe you have an image in mind. Maybe just spend your time creating the drawing simply, not thinking about anything else, and then adding collage elements later. Um, Rupert, Rupert von Kaufmann. Um, he's German, though. He went to Art Center too, um, the art school that I went to. He's a really cool oil painter. His charcoal drawings are nice too. Um, and it looks like he kind of completes them and then he kind of just takes an exacto knife, cuts out. I think he, so it looks like he cut this out here and then flips it or just see, you can see it says he puts it down lower. So like this, this shape is the positive shape of this white that's here because the white is basically the wall now that you see through the drawing. Oh, it's a close up. I like showing close ups because they're really nice charcoal drawings. Another one of his, same same kind of idea, he kind of tears out a negative space and then uses the negative space as like a positive shape in the drawing. And here's another shape that comes from probably another drawing. And then cuts this all up into tassels. Another one. Cuts that all. And in, in, in here, like, you, sh you should be asking yourself, like, you know, what is it doing? It's like... Is it, what is it, like, representing? Because I think they are representing something. And here, to me, it almost looks like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of, like, comic book thought bubbles in a weird way. Here it does. And this really nice charcoal drawing, and then he sort of looks uses some kind of hole punch, it looks like. And then he glues one down here, but I don't think he glues any of the other ones down. See a close up. So the reason why I kind of think of these as layers too sometimes is I mean, sometimes they are actual. He's, he's layering another piece here, and then the wall too I guess counts as a layer too. Um, this artist, um, Pamela Sundstrom, does these really wonderful um, pastel drawings and I forget I think there's ink in here in other medium it's I think it's a mixed medium piece but you can kind of think of it as like like you're just drawing one thing and then you're seeing through it's like here like this polka dot background we see through the head and, and then we see another figure and then there's this nice little was it a cheetah and then this nice little like wireframe red here it's just nice it's just a layer on top of layer on top of layer and even the cheetah print looks like it, it kind of is echoed in this pattern here, and then it turns into the leaf pattern here. Just nice echoing of form and objects. So you can think of it as like, you know, here's a close-up. You can think of it as like you're seeing through. And here you can see the grid that was in the background. You still see it through here. And then um, this looks like it was done with pastel on top of the, the print or the cheetah pattern. It's just layering and layering and layering. It's really nice. Another close-up. 